The Plan Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation, enriching the lives of those on the eastern shore of Maryland through the arts. Visit avalonfoundation.org for details on events, performances, and educational programming offered throughout the year. Today's episode is sponsored by JFM Enterprises, providing distinctive ready-made and custom frames and moldings to the trade since 1974. Visit jfm.net to view their catalog of designs. My first year, my truck broke down, and I had to take that to get fixed. The people in town are there to help you. They're just they're, they're great people. Um, Rodney uh, fixed my truck for me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Annie let me borrow her car. It was. You know, we call in all just, the favors during plein air. All right, Marie, we are welcome. This is Plein Air Eastern Podcast 4, I believe, and Marie Nuthall is here hosting with myself, Tim Wagon, today. Welcome, Marie. Hi. Hi, Tim. How'd you like talking to Jay? I really enjoy Jay a lot. He is uh, he has been in uh, Plein Air Easton alumni artist for two years now, and um, he's a super, super great guy, easy to get along with, really enjoys the competition, so it was really, it was nice to hear his take on it. And we are speaking today with Jay Brooks, who is an artist, Plein Air artist, and also studio artist from uh, Catskills area, and uh, talked about his first times applying to Easton and the nerve-wracking part that it was and he didn't think he'd get in and um, and by the way he sold a lot of paintings too Marie. Yes. Marie right. was there something else that you wanted to say before we actually yeah, get going? Yeah so I really have to get this off my uh, off my plate right now so in the very first episode when we did our trailer and Tim you asked me if I am an art collector and Silly me, I said no, because I was thinking of the grand scale of art collecting, which, you know, like I'm, I'm a Lisa. beginner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of collecting Monet's and, you know, not the little jewels that I do have in my house. So, yes, I do collect art, and I just wanted to make sure everybody was clear on that. I, I love art passionately, so. Marie all art collector. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk to Jay Brooks. All right, here we go. Here we are, Jay Brooks. Welcome to Plan Air Eastern Podcast. How are you doing, Jay? Doing fine. How are you? It's good to see you in something other than uh, <laughs> Hawaiian shirts and shorts. <laughs> right, his lumberjack outfit on today. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I am interested, Jay, in, first of all, how many times did you enter? I entered two times, and uh, I got accepted uh, both times. Oh, you got accepted both times. Wow, yeah. congratulations. And, and I guess we should uh, just preface this by saying that the actual entry deadline for plenary is coming up pretty soon. Is that right, January Marie? 24th, yes. January 24th, okay. So, uh, Jay, you entered twice, and uh, I guess, w were you scared to enter the first? Did you think, we hear that sometimes, that people think they may have been out of their league, or it was too serious of a competition, or did that affect you at all in any way? Oh, yeah, I was convinced. I convinced myself that I wasn't going to get in. I, I looked at, um, I met some friends up in, in Gloucester, and I was texting them and, you know, asking around, you know, are you going to apply to Easton? Oh, yeah, I'm going to, and I just thought, nah, I'm, I'm not going to get in. So I was very pleasantly surprised. I think it was, uh, I remember I got the email in school, it was about noon, and if early, mid-February, and um, I just ran up and down the halls shouting, and you know, I was I was so happy. It was, uh, it was I was surprised they actually got in. And what were your impressions of it? It was, uh, it was overwhelming, and it was I I did um, Cape Ann Plain Air first, so that was my first event ever, and um, it was going to Easton was pretty much like going to the Super Bowl. It, <laughs> it was pretty overwhelming. It's uh, it's it's very intense. Um, but it's so incredibly gratifying as an artist. It's you know it's top the top event ever. So what um, what if anything prevented you from um, going going ahead and applying that that first time in years prior? What do you what do you think was holding you back? Um, I didn't even know about the uh, competition actually until I met like I said some friends up in Gloucester, 
and they said, oh, you should just try uh, Easton. So I'd actually just gotten back into plain air painting um, just a couple of years ago. I was I was a big, you know, plain air painter back in the... That's how I actually started out painting back in the 80s when I was a teenager. And uh, had a family and, you know, the logistics of having kids, it's kind of hard to cart that stuff around. And, and uh, 2018 was my first uh, year at plain air Easton. So did you become a different kind of painter um, when you had the children, or did you just stop painting altogether? Or did you go in the studio so you didn't have to carry things around anymore? Exactly. I had a, um, I have a studio. We live in a little log cabin up here in, in the Catskills, and I have a, a studio attached um, to the side of the cabin. So that's pretty much I, I spent my time doing studio paintings for various galleries. Um, I, I'll throw a question yeah. out. Um, I'm... It, I, you know, from what little I can see of of your background, I'm imagining this cabin and the cat stills and and your studio there. Um, how did it, with the years that you were painting just in your studio, how has your plein air work uh, in these different environments compared to your studio work? Um. It's a lot looser. That's the nice thing about these events. You meet so many different artists with so many different techniques and, and different pieces of equipment, different types of paints and brushes. And uh, it's almost like um, teach it, it's like taking a it's like a college art course on steroids for 10 days. Um, it, it's you learn you just absorb so much information. And um, I guess my paintings of gotten a lot looser but also brighter in color the physicality of the paint on the surface is is much more um you know it's much more easy to see so uh it, it's it's definitely uh, if you want to improve as an artist i highly recommend doing any one of these competitions well, we have a lot of people that say that they did never expected to get in and then they actually do i so it's, it's gratifying to hear that um when you find out that you get in jay what type of preparations do you have to make to do something like a eight or ten day painting festival as a, as a painter? It's funny because a friend of mine at, at work, he's uh, he's heavily into Spartan racing, and um, you do have to get in shape. I mean, plein air painting is something. You, it's it's um, it's not really like riding a bike. It takes a couple of weeks to lose uh, to lose that awareness when you're outdoors, uh, that that quickness. So. Um, I, I did a lot of plein air painting um, prior to the event, and uh, it, you do have to get your brain and your, your eyes in shape and uh, get your equipment ready. Um, you have to make provisions for your, your framing, your, your paints, and, uh, and if you live really far away, which, you know, that's a good thing. I, I, I live within driving distance. You know, you have to make provisions for shipping and all that stuff. So, uh, no, it takes, it takes a lot of preparation to get ready for an event like this. Once I got the notification, I got my easel out and I tried to start painting outdoors probably once a week. And as the event got closer, a few times a week and then um, once a day. And sometimes um, then you would try to pace yourself because sometimes you want to paint. You might have to do crank out three or four paintings in one day. So it, I try to build up the intensity as, as you get to the event. So it, you're, so like I said, you're not overwhelmed, you're not out of practice, and you just ease right into it. Jay, what would you say was your biggest, um, the, the biggest surprise about the competition, whether that was in the, your fellow colleagues or a, any aspect? Can you speak to that? I guess maybe the landscape, uh, the surroundings of uh, Talbot County. Um, like I said, I come from the Catskills. Um, you can walk outside and, and just go for a, a less than a mile walk and, and have a scene right in front of you. And the terrain of Talbot County is, is pretty flat. And, um, and I found that to be um, kind of tough my first year, but my second year, I, I, I was up more for the challenge to go out and seek and find different interesting places to paint. And um, now that I'm more familiar with the area, there are really there are a lot of great places to paint in Talbot County. Uh, waterfront, you go in inland to the farms. Um, the people are so friendly and so hospitable. It's uh, um, it, it's they're so welcoming. Uh, they're very into uh, this uh, plain air event, and um, it's just it's a great 
when you get off the beaten path, there are just tons. There's just probably as many great places to paint as there are here at home. So that was the biggest challenge for me was was trying to find that that scene, you know. But I, I quickly found a lot. <laughs> and um, Jay, uh, just to go back a little bit, when you decide as an artist that you're going to apply, how do you pick the paintings that you submit to the judge, to the the jurying judge, to see if you get in? How do how does what kind of thought process goes into that? Well, I guess I try to think like a judge, and I think of the criteria uh, that judges use um, when they judge a painting. I think it's a basic, uh, simple four uh, four step criteria. It's composition, uh, light, color. Um, am I forgetting something? An idea. Um, so, so those those four. There's probably a few other little essential items that make a, a strong painting. And I, I also. Uh, I text my mother all my choices, and she she always has such a great idea. And my wife as well. Um, they between my mom and my wife, they have really great visual eyes, and, and uh, they haven't uh, they haven't picked wrong paintings yet. So, <laughs> Team J, I love the support system. What has been so far in your two years? What has been the most lasting, endearing? Um, effect of being in a big competition that has kind of stayed with you? I think the, the camaraderie and the friendships of, of all the artists and all the people involved with the event, the volunteers, um, the people, you know, our, our host, um, Annie and Meg, uh, just all the, the friendships and the, and the relationships that you, you know, that you cultivate over, uh, over the years. It's um, one of these years of, if for whatever reason I, I can't make it down there either I don't get accepted or I can't make it it's going to be tough because it's it's like kind of become a, a yearly ritual that you know you have the expectation that you're going to see these people again right like, like a tough. reunion exactly and then you know if, if there's an artist that you you know have a great friendship with and they don't make it that year or they're not there and it's kind of kind of a bummer and like you said it, it is like a reunion and people travel from so far that you know you only get to see them once a year but i think the friendships and the and the relationships are the you know that that's the greatest thing yeah that's outstanding is there a spirit about plein air easton because you i think you mentioned earlier that it's like going to the major leagues or whatever and, and we well certainly appreciate that that doesn't go to anyone's head around here or anybody in easton's head or anybody in talbot county's head but it's just and it kind of it lends itself to the question is there an atmosphere here that is a little bit different than uh, other places and i'm sure other places have their own atmosphere as well but what is it about easton um that makes it kind of special uh this whole event runs like the engine of a lamborghini it's just you know it's so finely tuned uh everything is in sync all the way from from the top down you know the artists that show up the volunteers, the way it's organized, the collectors, it, um, and like like Marie once said, it's it's like the high point of uh, it's one of the biggest events of Talbot County all year round, and it really um, I could equate the event. It's like the Super Bowl of plein air painting. It really is. I I can't. Um, I haven't done a lot of events in various places, but the ones I have done, this is this is definitely the Super Bowl right here. It has set the bar for you, sounds like. <laughs> Jay, tell me about, um, sh can you share a funny story? Do you have a funny story to tell us about Plan Air Easton? Or just a funny story in general. Take anything funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> just make us laugh. <laughs> funny story. Well, it's kind of funny, but not so funny. Um, so I was, I was at uh, Tillman Island, and uh, I was doing a painting... Uh, Susie Baker was on the other side of the bridge in the shade, and I was out in the sun. And um, it was it was quite hot, and uh, I I thought I did the right thing by bringing bottled water with me, and I, I kept hydrating. And all of a sudden, I just felt kind of um, like I was getting the chills, and I felt like agitated, just didn't feel right. And so I. And I remember orientation, 
and um, knowing the signs of heat exhaustion. So I quick went um, back to my truck and uh, and I went to get some. I knew I needed some electrolytes, so I had goldfish there, which they passed out at um, <laughs> at the uh, the guest uh, area there. So I turned on my AC in my truck and doused my head with water. And on my way to my truck, I thought I saw Charlie Newman. And I went back to my truck, and he said something like, hey, how's it going? And I just kind of – I was really not feeling good. So I just kind of walked past him and didn't respond to him. And I felt bad. I felt really guilty. And um, so I felt better, like, within five minutes. And I went back to finish my painting. You know, when you're working on a painting, it's like, oh, just five more minutes, you know, just five more minutes. And then that turns into a half an hour. Next thing you know, right. you're, like, laying in a heap. So, um, so I – I went back to my painting and Charlie wasn't there. I thought, oh, that's good, because I, you know, I, I didn't want to be rude or anything and just not say anything to him. So a few days later, um, me and Charlie and Pat Lee, and I think um, Tim might have been up there too. We were all framing our paintings up on the balcony where it was air conditioned. And Charlie goes, "You feeling better?" I was like, "What do you?" And I got thinking like, that was really weird. Like, was I ready to? pass out because I'm starting having hallucinations that I thought Charlie was there. He goes, are you feeling better? And I said, yeah, why? He goes, you didn't look so good at Tillman Island. And he walked past me when I was standing over by the crab tank. And I was like, oh my God, that was you. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I didn't feel good. I didn't mean to like walk past and not say hello to you. He goes, no, you didn't look too good. And I was like, so a kind of funny story because I'm okay now. But um, one thing, definitely, if I could give any advice to any people, um, if you're not used to the heat, um, more than water, get Gatorade. You need those electrolytes. You got to get that salt back in you. Because I, uh, we went out to dinner that one night, and I had this white powder on my arms, and it was actually from the salt, from the sweat. And and the moral of the story is, please listen to the orientation <laughs> as we're standing up there telling you all these little tidbits. You need that salt. You need that. Um, you need Gatorade. You got to get those or PD light or whatever. Get those yeah. electrolytes back in you. The heat is real. Yeah. yeah. So you need to tell them Gatorade at the orientation room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this podcast brought to you by Gatorade. Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade are like that. I love I love Gatorade. <laughs> Lemon lime, my favorite thing. <laughs> Anything else you would tell anybody who might be listening to this uh, podcast about the experience and whether or not to to uh, give it a shot, even though you don't think you're going to maybe get in like you did and that that type of thing. Stick it out. It's it's um, it can be overwhelming. But um, it's worth just stick it out. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do get overwhelmed. And, um, you know, I know there's some stories that sometimes people even, you know, up and leave because the, it's just too, it's too taxing on them. Uh, but, and things do happen. My first year, my truck broke down and I had to take that to get fixed. The people in town are there to help you. They're just, they're, they're great people. Um, Rodney uh, fixed my truck for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Andy, Andy let me borrow her car. It was, you know, people are just really, uh, they're there to help you. And uh, we call in all best. the favors during plein air, all the favors, yeah. all of our friends. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just a great, wonderful place that you guys have a great, uh, great town that you live in. And, uh, and uh, part of me wishes that I lived there all year round, but it is a great town. So Jay, what's on the horizon for the for the upcoming year in regards to um, your profession, your career? What what you got going on? Um, I was invited uh, to go to Door County. Um, I'm still trying to work that out. With you know, if I do get into Easton, uh, that's going to be a tough one. Um, I do have um, some aspirations, I guess, to get back in the studio. Um, and try to get hooked up with some some galleries, uh, hopefully. Um, but that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm trying different uh, different subject matters. I've been trying some wildlife things. I've also been uh, trying to become more active uh, with the Salma Gundy Club, which I'm a member of in New York City, and uh, that's another great venue. So that's also a closer to home here. It's only an hour and a half, two hours away. Yeah, congratulations. That's pretty amazing. Thank you. Um, I'm also very close to retirement, uh, my teaching job. So um, I'm ready to start my second career. I'm getting kind of antsy. Well, that's great. We will certainly look forward to having you back here. Uh, good luck with, with the entry and getting into Plan Air Easton 2020. And um, 
we really appreciate you taking this time to, to speak with us and just letting everybody know what uh, what they can expect from trying to get into Plenary Easton and actually when you get in what happens and how that sort of goes. Marie, you got anything else? Um, I don't, it was great to it was great to talk to you, Jay, and uh, best of luck on your entry and hope to see you soon. Even if not for the competition, you know you're always welcome to stop by here and say hello. Get your truck Absolutely. fixed. <laughs> Get your truck fixed. <laughs> you know, it's whatever. It's great to see you guys again and tell all my friends down there I said hello when I miss we them. We absolutely will. We will. Thanks, Jay. Plan Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation and was produced by Nick Richards. Our theme music was generously provided by Blue Dot Sessions with additional episode music by Poddington Bear. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. You can learn more about Plan Air Easton at planairisten.com.